Hey everybody, this is Jen from Garden Jen's Journey. This past weekend here in Zone 5B, Central Michigan, we just had our first frost. Um, it was a couple days early compared to what the uh, the frost advisory uh, website has said. It was expecting our first frost to be between the 24th and the 25th, uh, but we got it last weekend. Um, so pretty much most of my garden is done. But I'm going to take you for a walk to show you what's left in the garden, what we still got going, and to share some news with you. So let's go take a walk. Okay, so this is my container bed area where all my different containers are. You can see it's kind of a mess right now. Um, these containers right here are what we use to cover my beds and some pots here when the frost hit because we do have some cold tender crops uh, still in the ground that we're trying to uh, keep the season going on. Uh, like I got some lettuce here and uh, I got some mustards there and uh, some I had some stevia over there but I just transplanted that to another pot to take inside um, so yeah we had to cover these up um, just to protect them we have more lettuce over here some beets and things like that and since they're still a little small uh, we wanted to make sure that we protected them from the frost it got down to 29 degrees here um, Friday night I believe is what it was so yeah so it was really really cold so we definitely wanted to protect these younger seedlings um, it's getting down to around the 40s now mid 40s at night and uh, kind of warm during the day not really warm it's around 60 or so I'm really cold <laughs> but anyways um, so they'll be fine for about another week or so and we might have to cover them again we'll be watching the weather so my tomatoes are done um, completely destroyed by the frost so I'll be pulling those out eventually um, my sunflowers are pretty much done um, I'm just waiting for them to cure a little bit more I've been watching the seed heads um, I want them to dry as much as possible out here because in my home it can be kind of humid and so um, if I were to try to take the seed heads inside they'd mold more than likely because the seed heads have a lot of moisture in there and so taking something that's full of moisture into an area that's full of moisture is not going to help dry these bad boys out. So I've been watching and um, I'm waiting to see when birds start going after these guys. Um, when I start seeing um, birds go after them um, I'm going to cut them off and take them inside because that lets me know that they're ready since the birds are starting to eat them. These are my other containers I got going on. These are my leeks. They're probably going to overwinter in these pots. They're going to die back and then they'll come back in the spring. Leeks need a long time to grow I guess. Um, and this one's, these couple ones are getting pretty big. But um, yeah, I'm going to just overwinter them here in these pots. They'll die back and they'll come back in the spring and they'll be um, having a great head start uh, to get some awesome sized leeks next year. I also have more Swiss chard. My roselle is toast, as you can see. I didn't get any seeds from it um, because I didn't have time to develop the flowers. Um, but at least I know what it looks like and that the plant gets really big. So when I uh, try to grow it again next year, um, I will have a better idea of where to put this thing. My goji berry. Look at this beautiful flower that just opened up today, actually. So, um, and then there's another bud over here. So the goji berry is doing really well. Um, I bought this. I did not grow it from seed. I bought it as a bare root plant early in the spring. Um, so it's doing really well. It's going to overwinter and it'll be just fine. Parsley is doing good. It was a little droopy um, after that really, really cold night, but it bounced back. Parsley is quite cold tolerant. It just needs time to bounce back. Same with my tarragon. Look at this tarragon. It's just loving it right now. Indigo, not so much. Same with the uh, lemongrass. Le uh, lemongrass does not like cold. It's more of a tropical plant, so it's starting to die back a little bit. <clears throat> These are my lima beans. They got hit pretty hard because they are a bean. Um, the frost killed quite a bit, damaged quite a bit. 
but it's not completely gone yet. There's still some viable leaves on there. Um, but yeah, uh, there's lots and lots of lime and bean pods on here. Um, I'm just waiting for them to continue to dry and um, um, just be ready to harvest that way. Uh, it's easier to pick them when the pods are dry than to try to pick them when the pods are still green. Um, it's kind of hard to get them apart and not damage the, the seeds inside. So um, yeah, I'm waiting for them to dry as much as possible. I come out here about every other day and harvest about a handful or so of pods as they start to uh, dry out. So yeah, this is our lima beans. <clears throat> As we walk into the main garden, um, you can see the petunias, they're doing okay. They were hit a little bit, but not so bad. And then uh, my straw flowers, there's straw flowers seem to be quite hardy. So excited about that. <clears throat> Coxcomb, not so hardy. That was completely toast. I have quite a few different varieties that are toast. My lemon balm didn't do so well. It's toast, except for what was right in the middle and protected by the outer skirts. Uh, so what's in the middle is still surviving, um, but it's a perennial and it's in the mint family, so it's going to grow back anyway. No big deal about that. Um, but yeah, the rest of my um, medicinal garden is looking pretty good. Most of it is cold hardy, only a few are, are uh, frost sensitive, so it, overall it's looking pretty good. Just panning around here in my rose garden, you can see my pumpkin plant, completely toast, that's gone. Um, but the roses are looking good. My sedum back there. I love the sedum because uh, when it uh, starts to grow, it looks like a small, just lovely uh, succulent. It's really neat. And then eventually it grows these tall flower spikes and it's just an interesting plant. So yeah, that's the sedum back there. And then uh, my uh, rhubarb is still holding on. I'll eventually cut that back as mulch. You see more cocks come over here. It's completely toast. Um, more straw flowers doing good. Bachelor buttons are done. This is bee balm. And if anybody has an idea on how to keep powdery mildew off of bee balm, hit me a comment in the post below to let me know because every year I deal with powdery mildew like crazy all over my bee balm. <clears throat> So this is my um, mother stollard beans and also my loofah vines and uh, I don't think the loofahs are going to make it this year. They grew a lot bigger than they did last year and I had a lot more of them. But with the frost, um, it's probably damaged these pods and I think they're going to rot instead of dry out. But I'm just going to leave them hanging here because uh, I hope that they dry out, but if not, this is a good place to store them until I feed them to the chickens. Then right next to it, this is where all my cucumelons were. And you see, they are toast as well. This is a Nakeen cherry that I put in here. It was another bare root plant that I had bought, and I put it in a pot after a while. Um, it took a long time to really get going. It's a slow grower it looks like. Um, but I'm trying to get this to be a nice size before I actually transplant it into the ground where it's going to go. I like to make sure that when I get bare root plants that I give them a nice good head start uh, because our soil in this area is very high iron and it uh, kind of ties up nutrients. So if you try to plant a bare root plant directly in the ground in this area, uh, the the percentage of failure is extremely high. So I always try to start them in a pot first, get them good size and get that root system really developed. Then they have a much better chance of surviving. One uh, plant that I can give you a reference to is my fig tree over here. As we go over to the fig tree, this is my bok choy. I have purple lady bok choy on the other side, but this is one bok choy this is my bronze fennel. It's getting where it's almost time to start harvesting it. <clears throat> but this is my fig tree over here. And yeah, the frost basically has killed it. Um, but that's a fig. A fig is not very cold hardy. Um, this is a Chicago 
hard, uh, cold hardy fig tree. Um, it's bred for our climate, for the colder climates. Um, but this tree here, there was actually two that I had bought because uh, I wanted to be able for them to pollinate each other. But it took, this is three, a uh, three year old plant now. Um, I try planting this in the ground. I had a couple different years that I've tried planting the bare root plant and they died. They did not make it. But I planted this and the other uh, uh, plant that I bought at the same time in the pots and let them grow in the pots for a year before I put them in the ground. And then they did better. Um, last year both plants came up and then died back and then this year just this one came up because the other one that was sitting over here uh, the chickens had destroyed by scratching uh, the root base completely destroying it so but yeah this is this is uh, the only way I can get bare root plants to grow in our area is to make sure I get the the plants growing in a pot first uh, get it well established and then put it in the ground and again over here, the powdery mildew all over my bee balm. It's just interesting that bee balm is highly susceptible to powdery mildew. All right, so back here is my rosa red buckwheat. It's finally died back. The, rose, uh, the frost killed it. Tucked in there is some cabbage. I'm going to be pulling that out, making sauerkraut soon. All my tomatoes that were here got pulled out. Hollyhocks are still doing pretty good, um, so they're definitely a frost hardy plant. I wasn't sure. First time growing those, so, but they're doing pretty good. All the beans that were here, the cucumbers, I just pulled all those out yesterday. I had cucumelons here, they're dead too. The peas are still doing pretty good. Um, they were a little droopy when it got cold, but not too much. Peas are a very cold hardy crop, so I'm not sure how long I'll have if I get, um, any real type of harvest on it because this is my first time doing a fall garden but as you can see I do have some pea pods on it so that's pretty cool <clears throat> and again this is my purple lady bok choy over here and then this is more Swiss chard <clears throat> over here this bed is kind of sad um, this is where all my zinnias were and then um, uh, the beautiful calendulas. This year I had a lot of beautiful colored calendulas and I plant from the same seed every year. So it's just interesting that I had some really interesting colors. I had this really, really bright yellow. I mean, this is really, really bright. And then I have a little bit darker yellow. And then I had some orange. Let's see if I still have some orange flowers over here. I had the darker orange, and uh, this was where my other tomatoes are that are all dead. <clears throat> and then my beans were over there, they're all dead. But this is where I planted some spinach and some lettuce. And of course, all the coxcomb are all dead, so it's kind of interesting. My dog checking out the savory over there. <laughs> but I wanted to show you over here. See the bicolor calendula? I've never seen a bicolor calendula before. So I definitely um, are, am saving seeds from them. Even though, like I said, all these are from the same plants uh, in the beginning. So it's not like I brought in new seed or bought new varieties. It's just uh, different colors are starting to come out. So I'm trying to save the seeds from the different color heads and see if maybe I can reproduce those colors. But I don't know if I can or not because they're all basically from the same plant anyway. So my next task is right here. Uh, underneath the zinnias here um, are my peanuts. And uh, they definitely just got killed. <laughs> so I need to try to get them pulled up and see if we actually have some peanuts this year. Okay, so I've moved some other plants that I'm trying to keep alive until the very end of the season into my greenhouse. Alright, so in the greenhouse I have these peppers that have been in here. This is where I generally grow peppers because it stays nice and hot the way that peppers like it. So I have my jalapenos and I have my Advarsky. I'm not really expecting them to produce any more. Um, that's not really why I have them in here. 
but I'm hoping that what they have left on here, like this jalapeno has some peppers on it. Um, that one does too. I think the Avarsky has one or two small peppers on it. I'm hoping that they will finish growing so I can harvest some mature peppers this year um, from these guys before it's time for them to go to sleep. <laughs> Also, same thing over here, we have moved my basil in here. Um, I was so thankful because I had forgot about my basil. It was out front um, on my <clears throat> porch that's in the shade because that's where basil likes to grow. It doesn't, it likes partial sun to shade. It does not like full sun. <clears throat> but anyways, I had forgot that they were out there. And when the frost came, um, I didn't lose too much. You can see the frost damage on the... Uh, the Genovese basil in the back, and there is some here on the Thai basil. <clears throat> and a little bit on, uh, this is holy basil over here. I've never grown it before, and this was all that survived from seeds I tried growing. So I was hoping I could get more seeds out of it, but I don't think that's going to happen. But anyway, so yeah, they're in here. I'll probably prune them a little bit because you can see they're, they're quite a bit damaged. Um, but I was hoping to save them, so we shall see. And then in front of them is my stevia that I had transplanted from the container bed out front. I'm hoping to keep it outdoors as much as possible um, until um, I have space in my home to move it in there to overwinter it um, for the following year. Stevia is very hard to grow from seed you have less than 10% chance of germination. So your best bet is to propagate from uh, an established plant that you have already. Um, so that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get these guys through the winter and uh, that way I have a good established plant that I can try to propagate more uh, plants from next year. So that is the garden update for after the frost. Um, here in my garden in zone 5b um, the frost uh, if you look at dates of when our frost generally is in this area the frost was basically four weeks early three to four weeks early compared to the most common time we have frost in this area so the climate is definitely starting to change um, the sh seasons are getting shorter our frost for the beginning of the year is starting to come in a uh, later and later um, so yeah, our seasons are getting shorter and shorter, at least in my area. Um, some places I guess they're getting longer. I don't know. I know for my area here um, in central Michigan that our seasons are really starting to get shorter. So I have to plan next year on doing uh, crops that will definitely grow in the shorter seasons. Um, I've been trying to grow the loofah here. Um, a lot of people do it successfully if they get the plants going in uh, in the home uh, early 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 and plant them out uh, late and you can see that I have some wonderful loofahs but because of the shorter season um, they weren't able to completely mature and start to dry out in order to use them as a loofah sponge so I'm probably not going to be trying to grow the loofah anymore um, our seasons just too short now to uh, have a successful harvest for that. Um, there's some other plants I probably won't be growing because again, our season seems to be getting shorter. Uh, some different squash varieties because they need the, the heat and the dry to, to really uh, ripen and, and cure. Uh, I probably won't be growing uh, because again, we just don't have that time frame anymore. So looking at a lot more short season crops. The other news I wanted to share with you, sorry, my arms get tired holding the camera since I don't have my tripod. <laughs> but anyways, the other news I wanted to share with you is another uh, trail on my journey that I'm going to be taking next week. Um, one of my beloved cats that I've had for 13 years now, uh, in a week, next Monday, will be putting her down. Um, she started developing some tumors a couple years ago that you could see, um, but they weren't really affecting her health or anything. They were just, you know, there, as some animals get just tumors that are grown outside of their body that don't really affect them internally. Well, 
how this year I started noticing that they're starting to in, uh, affect her internally. She's got some tumors near her, uh, on her belly, near her intestines that I think are starting to encroach upon her intestines and things. So she's showing signs that um, it's it's time to put her down um, and uh, let her rest in peace before the tumors get really bad and she really starts suffering. So that's another journey I have to take. Not really looking forward to it. I'm trying to stay positive um, because right now she is very happy. She's um, energetic. Um, she's just starting to show some some signs that it that it's time because we don't want her going any further where she really starts suffering. Um, so we try to want to put her to sleep while she's still on the upswing, I guess you could say. Um, but yeah. So that's the sad news around here is my 13 year old cat that I've had ever since she was a kitten. I'm going to have to put her down next week and so that's going to be going to be hard to do. Especially since last year, just over a year ago, uh, we had to put our dog Dyson down for a similar thing. He had a, a brain tumor that had uh, really started to affect uh, his quality of life. So that's the journey uh, this week, this month, this year, however you want to say it. Um, and I will continue to keep you updated on the garden and some other things that are going on around the homestead. So until next time, I hope that wherever you are, you are wonderfully blessed. Bye, everybody.